Do you want to tell right. them what the what econundrums are? Absolutely. Uh, so econundrums, as the word sort of implies, it's a combination of economy and conundrum. So the definition being that these are conundrums in our present economy. So yes. both from the job seekers and the employer's point of view. Benny and I actually met um, down in Springfield a number of months back mm -hmm. at a job fair and That's a woman right. had overheard us introducing ourselves as Sally and Benny. And, Benny. and what did she think we said? Salary and benefits. Right. <laughs> so we said, hold up. We have a really great show Absolutely. that we could create. So right. salary and benefits, you don't hear that too often. Mm -mm. So we came together That's to right. create this show. We just happened to be called Sally and Benny. Absolutely. So. And you put in your <laughs> that creative spirit of yours and the entrepreneurial spirit and put together these econondrips and voila. Voila. Let's get right to the next econondrum which we are calling dog chasing tail. Dog so it's like chasing tail. a dog chasing its tail <laughs> in a circle in today's job market. You mean like I need experience to get the job and I need a job to get experience. <laughs> you know, even if I do get the experience and the credentials, you know, things change so rapidly and so fast, I become obsolete in no, no kidding. time. I so can relate to that, as you know. I mean, I got my fancy college degree back in the day. I got 12 years of, you know, a mix of customer service and office management. And I didn't have that high-level computer skill either, and specifically that social media component today. Yes, that's important. And it's changing so quickly, like you just said. So I can go out and get that training, but, you know, in a month by the time I, or in some cases six months, I get, get the training get the funds. You get the certification. And they want something else. So how do we even keep up? Who moves my office? <sighs> <laughs> so this idea of a surprising shortage from the perspective of the employer, mm -hmm. that actually they're having a real hard time actually finding yeah. qualified, I'm talking technicians, engineers, how many times salespeople. Have we even though there are so many unemployed exactly. people. I, you know, I don't know, I think you said some statistics, some crazy statistic on you know, the unemployed across oh, the nation yeah. or whatever, but you know, it's unbelievable that these businesses, these corporations right. still can't find experienced people. Exactly. These technicians, engineers, right. salespeople. Right. I mean, what's up with that? Even sale? in Massachusetts alone, I mean, you've got over, you know, about over 200,000 people who are unemployed, and there's approximately 100,000 job openings. Those are only the ones that are posted and we're right, aware of. Exactly. You well, can tell I've been doing a lot of research. You have, and I think you, I, I think I heard you say it before, a corporation or a business would rather not hire That's than right. to hire the wrong person. Exactly, to reduce or eliminate their liability. Because it's hard. You bring somebody on board, especially as a typical W-2 employee, which, by the way, is not how a lot of companies are hiring initially. Gets back to that try it before you buy it. Mm -hmm. 1099, short-term mm -hmm. contract. But you're right. They'd rather just say, you know what? We'd rather keep it open than hire the wrong person. A series of sort of reverse incentives that I find in today's economy. It's almost like, at least in the short term, financially, you're better off just Chilling on your couch, not making moves, not taking a risk. Speed up with what do the you remote. Know about no this incentive. Reverse incentives. What's well, if, up? You know, if I jeopardize my unemployment and I and I, by taking a less yep. you know secure job, right? Or God forbid, I launch my own a small business. But you've been talking there's about there's no incentive for, for that. While I mean, I know yeah, that's in your gut. It is. It is. So but, you're saying if you do that, what what happens? You know. I lose my, my benefits. Right, Benny. You know, <laughs> I lose my, you know, and then what would I, you know, what what would I do for most jobs? What can I make? Right, you know? exactly. Especially because you had been climbing the ladder, so to speak, Absolutely. and you've been making a certain amount. So you want to at least come close because you've built up your lifestyle supported by that income. That's right. So, so now, and here's what blows me away. This has happened to me a few times. I'm willing to take that lower salary, but if I really look at it in the short term, at least in my first six months of unemployment yeah. last year, I'm thinking, you know what? It's not worth it 
to actually take that significant pay cut when right now, because I was making decent money in my last right. job, my unemployment benefits are actually calculated based on that decent income. Mm. So I'm making more money short term on unemployment benefits while I still have it than I would if I took most jobs out there today. Right, exactly. Are you seeing that in manufacturing? Uh, absolutely. And I, you know, don't tell anybody, but I've actually been doing an, um, some lawns on the side, yeah, you know, I try to bring it in a little, little extra I got cash you. here and there. You know, I, you you know, gotta do what I gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. I'm about. just saying, how does a jobless recovery help the job seeker? So companies may be profiting, mm -hmm. but if there aren't jobs being created simultaneous with a recovery, how does that help the average person? I'm just four generations. So four generations wow. mm -hmm. feeling the squeeze. Yes. So you've got, as I mentioned, the 16 to 24 year olds, uh, many of which do have college degrees. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're in debt. They're seeking that entry level job. And yet they're the, the babies, so to speak, are competing with the baby boomers, the baby boomers. Wow. Yes. So a lot so of true. the baby boomers who felt, OK, my retirement is in the bag. I'm mm -hmm. good to go. I'm out of here. 65. I'm retiring. I'm going to you know, buy my boat and head off on vacation. Mm -hmm. They're now, in many cases, taking the entry level jobs of the younger workers today. So that's quite the conundrum. That is an conundrum. Um, if you think about it, so you've got the 16 to 24 or the youth worker. Mm -hmm. Then you've got sort of the, the 25 to 45, which ideally those people are sort of in the prime of their career, mm. right? And look at us. We're in that age bracket, All give right. or take. <laughs> and, right? And Speak for yourself. We're, we're not, we can't, I can't say I'm in the, the top um, of my game right now. Right. You know, I feel like I'm being underutilized or I'm underemployed. No victims here. You know, I've launched my own business. I'm mm -hmm. still looking for the right gig. But, but I feel where you're coming from. Right? Absolutely. And then you've got people, you know, 45 to 65, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the 65 plus previously who would have retired. Mm. And so we've got this four generations feeling the squeeze. Anything else you're thinking mm, about that? Or no, but that's your... an interesting conundrum and so true. Yeah. So true. You know, yeah. and it's like, geez, you know, you'd hate to feel like you're competing. Right. And, and it's like you wish everybody could sort of fulfill on their own potential and have a place in the workforce. So hopefully we'll work to. Hopefully when that recovery yes. comes along. Hopefully it's a <laughs> job-filled recovery. Job exactly. <laughs> Screen time, OD. You know what I'm saying? I mean, people are always whipping out their mobile devices. I mean, I see it all the... What did you say? I mean, are you playing with me or...? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, right? Hold up, Benny, work with oh. me here. The point is, is how many people, whether you're employed or unemployed, are just experiencing this screen time overdose? Overdosing on the screen. And what's the impact of that? If you're mm. a job seeker who is plastered to your cell phone, or if you're a job seeker who is you know, behind your computer constantly and you're just there praying for that perfect job to right. drop in your inbox, you might actually miss, miss the opportunity. The opportunity. That's right. Because how do employers hire today, regardless of all the technological advances, employers still like they want face to face. They want face they to want, face. Want, absolutely. So if at you're at the end of the day. At the end of the day. Exactly, and I think you, you know, you've certainly been moving and shaking and getting different gigs even if they're part-time. Um, you know, you've got to be aware so that you don't miss opportunities that are presented every moment, right? That's right, absolutely. Um, so I thought that was, you know, an interesting thing. Just a, just a, you know, a reminder that we're, you know, we need people to look up. Mm -hmm. And we need to not just tune in to media, but we need to tune into each other. That was sort of an epiphany that's right. I had recently. Absolutely, and I like that. I think yeah. that's a great uh, message in that. In this particular conundrum, is tuning in to each other and to people, and to people, and to, to people in general, right? But and to each other. And, and, and Absolutely. It, it's it's an interesting thing because I and I believe it was the first conundrum from the first segment that we talked about, like where have the humans gone? Oh yes. And it feels like everything's online, right? And mm -hmm. you get frustrated because mm -hmm. you just want to deal with a person, or if you call, I mean. People know what we mean, and we've got to somehow rehumanize the job search market. Absolutely. I think that's a great sort of goal. And with that, I think I'll put mine away. Hey, you know, if you insist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't care what they say about tree huggers. Thank you, tree. Change is the only constant out there. You know, we try to plan, 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 and then the winds of change can sweep the plan right overseas and into another place. <laughs> Each experience is a stepping stone towards greater success. As long as we capitalize on our experiences and we learn. I just want to remind people that it's so natural to want to just give up, especially when circumstances are really tough. And nature is such a beautiful reminder to just step back, chill out, look up, and never give up. We talk a lot about you know, environmental work and being out there, but what about taking care of ourselves, our own primary environment, our body? So really just remembering the importance of health and well-being, um, whether it's in pursuit of a job or in how you live your life. I am totally committed, after being here today, I am gonna bring back an attitude of gratitude in my job search and in my life. So, thank you. It's Love. about keeping our faith.